hey everyone welcome back so in this video we shall take another approach to pca so i'm calling it the more formal approach because i'm going to state it as a theorem but it is just a different approach uh that's all uh, so if you remember in the previous video we saw that the point of this whole so pca is a transformation and the point of this whole transformation was one to retain information in the transformed data and two, um, to reduce the redundancy in the transformed data, right? So in retaining information, um, so information is captured by variance of the data and the redundancy in the data is captured by the covariance. So just a quick recap, we have a bunch of P variables. Uh, yi, remember, was the ith linear combination, and these are all the coefficients which are collected in this vector ai, and we have p of these linear combinations that we uh, are looking at, and the question in this PCA is how to choose these uh, coefficients, or what, how to choose these linear combinations. So, uh, some terminology. So the first PC or the first principal component is this first linear combination. So linear combination A1 transpose X that minimizes, sorry, that maximizes this variance uh, as subject to this particular condition. So A transpose A or A1 transpose A1 is equal to 1 is the same as saying norm of this vector A1 is 1. So why do we need this condition or what does this whole thing mean, okay? So remember our first objective was to retain information and I said information is same as the variance. So I want this transformed variable, right, y1, right, a1 transpose x is y1. So I want this transformed variable uh, y1 to have maximum variance so that it retains as much information as possible. Um, so this maximizes, uh, so maximizing of this variance achieves uh, information uh, retention. And if you think about it, uh, if you have a variable x, if I multiply it by uh, two, right? Uh, so variable of, uh, sorry, variance of two times x is four times variance x, right? If I multiply it by five, right? So uh, variance of five x is Phi squared, that's 25 times variance x. So what I'm saying is that I can inflate, I can artificially inflate this variance by just increasing um, the values or the magnitudes of the values in this vector. Uh, and this does not then really mean that my data has more information. It just means that I'm multiplying it with ridiculously large numbers to increase the variance. So to avoid that, right, so we want to make sure that this variance is actually capturing some information in the data and it's we're not just artificially inflating the values, we subject it to this condition. So this condition means that I cannot just use whatever values I want to increase the variance, right? Um, so that's the first principal component. Second principal component, again, we uh, use the same principles. So second principal component is the linear combination A2 transpose X now. Again, that minimizes the variance and subject to this condition. So we don't want to artificially inflate the variance. So with the norm of this uh, vector A2 is one. And there is one additional uh, uh, condition that covariance of this A1 transpose X, which is Y1 and Y2 is zero. So that means that my second principal component is uncorrelated with my first principal component. And this deals with this second condition of redundancy. So remember, if our variables are highly correlated, that means our data has, that means they are redundant. It's not necess necessary to involve uh, both the variables that are highly correlated. We can just include one in our data set. So that's the second condition. And then you uh, continue um, in this fashion. So the ith principal component is this linear combination AI transpose X that maximize the variances, uh, maximizes the variance of this YI subject to this condition. And 
uh, y i right which is a i transpose x is uncorrelated or the with all of the previous uh, uh, principal components so y i is uncorrelated with y1 y2 and so on till i minus 1 right uh, so these this is the terminology of uh, principal component analysis uh, so we have these p uh, principal comp uh, p principal components again so this again has uh, does not tell you exactly how to calculate these uh, constants uh, a or how to calculate these uh, principal components um, this tells you what kind of restrictions or assumptions or constraints these principal components have to satisfy So this theorem that we are going to look at will tell us exactly how to obtain those principal components or how to obtain those coefficients uh, A's. So sigma is the covariance matrix of this random vector. So it's going to be a P by P matrix. And sigma, and suppose sigma has eigenvalue eigenvector pairs, right? So it is P dimensional, so it can have P pairs. Lambda 1 is the first eigenvalue and E1 is the corresponding eigenvector. Uh, so we are rearranging all of the eigenvalues in the decreasing order, right? So you'll find the eigenvalue. The largest one is going to be lambda 1 and the eigenvector for that eigenvalue is going to be E1. The second largest eigenvalue is going to be lambda 2 and its eigenvector E2 and so on. We are assuming that all of the eigenvalues are... Uh, greater than or equal to zero. So according to this theorem, the ith principal component is given by, uh, so yi, right, is a linear combination or yi is ei transpose x. So basically what this is saying that all of the coefficients, right, uh, in this uh, linear combination come from basically the eigenvectors. So for the ith eigen for the ith principal component, I multiply my original data with the ith eigenvector. Right? So this theorem is saying that um, principal components obtained in this fashion are going to satisfy all of the constraints and conditions that uh, we require. Um, that, that we require. So now we know how to calculate the principal components, right? We just calculate um, the eigenvalue, eigenvector of the covariance matrix, and we sort them in decreasing order, and we just uh, use the eigenvectors to calculate the principal components. So with this, uh, variance of the ith principal component is ei transpose uh, sigma ei which is just lambda i so what this first statement is saying that variance of yi is just lambda i and the second um, point is that covariance between yi and yk is zero so the i and k uh, principal components are uncorrelated uh, so we are not going to prove this theorem. So I will will not show that these principal components are maximizing the variance. Uh, that's a little beyond the scope uh, for this of this course. Uh, however, we will verify that variance of y i is lambda i and that all of the principal components are uncorrelated. So we will verify these two conditions. This theorem, uh, the proof of this theorem is. Um, much more beyond verifying these two conditions, right? So we are not showing that anything is being maximized. So with this limitation in mind, let's try to show one and two. So variance of yi, so yi is just ei transpose x. And if you remember the linear combination properties that we did last time, variance of this is just EI transpose, variance of X, which is sigma times EI. So uh, EI is the eigenvector of sigma, right? So sigma times EI is just lambda I times EI. So this, this bit comes from the definition of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, right? So sigma EI is lambda I times EI.
And now lambda i is just a constant, it's just a number, so we can always move numbers around. So we cannot just move matrices and vectors around, but we can always move um, numbers around. So I'm going to move this uh, lambda i to the left. So I have lambda i times e i transpose e i, and if you remember, in the matrix uh, algebra videos, that e i transpose e i is 1 right because we are orthonormalizing the eigen uh, vectors so we are left with lambda i so we are done with the first statement so let's take a look at the second one so covariance between y i y k i plug in the values uh, now again if you recall the properties um, of linear combination covariance is e i transpose sigma times z k again by definition of eigenvalue eigenvector, sigma times e k is lambda k times e k. Uh, move the uh, move this constant lambda k to the left, and again we know that these um, eigenvectors are uh, orthogonal, so their inner product or the dot product is zero. So thus we have shown that the co that the principal components are uncorrelated. So now we shall take a look at another result that we will be using uh, a lot uh, in this chapter. So this says that sum of all of the variances of my variables, right? Variance of xi, i goes from 1 to p. So we are summing over uh, variances of all of the variables is the same as the uh, total variance of yi. So the total uh, sum of uh, or the total uh, variance of all the x variables is the same as the total uh, variance of all of the y variables, which is the same as sum of all of the uh, eigenvalues. Remember, this lambda i is an eigenvalue of the covariance of xi, which is the same as trace of this uh, covariance matrix. Sigma is again the covariance of uh, covariance matrix of x. So what is a trace of a matrix? So I'm sure a bunch of you or probably all of you know this, but just a quick recap. The trace of a matrix is the sum of all of its diagonal elements. So you have a, a matrix, you sum all of the diagonal elements, and that's a trace. Another definition is that uh, the trace of a matrix is also the sum of eigenvalues. So what this says is if you sum all of the diagonal elements of a matrix, or you sum all of the eigenvalues, it's the same thing, right? These two sums are equal and the sum is called as the trace of a matrix. Okay, so let's prove this. Uh, so one part of this is easy, right? So from the previous theorem, we know that variance of y i is lambda i. So I know we know this. So if you sum over all of the variances, you're summing over all of the lambda i's, which is the sum of all eigenvalues, and that's the trace by definition. And next, now sum of variance of xi is the same as trace of sigma. Why is that? So for this, we'll refer to the first definition of trace. So what, so sigma is the covariance matrix of x, and think about this, what are um, so think about uh, all of the elements that lie on the diagonal of this matrix, right? So the diagonal of the matrix contains all of the variances, right? So the sum of this variance of xi is the trace of all of the diagonal elements of sigma, which is the trace. So uh, from these two parts, we get that basically uh, we get the result, right? So trace is the same therefore this sum of the uh, sum of all the variances of x variables is the same as sum of the variances of y variables so the result is proved so uh, why is this result important so the proportion of variance explained by the ith principal component is going to be this right so the variance of the i principal component is lambda i and we know that the total variance in the data is just the sum of all of the lambda i's so lambda i by this thing is this is the proportion of variance explained by the i principal component 
so um, we will see shortly uh, that uh, principal component analysis is a, a data a reduction or a dimension reduction matrix, right? So if we have a data set that contains a ton of variables, right? So typically principal components is used to uh, obtain an, another data set or to basically it's used to reduce the dimension of the original data set. And this will uh, help us accomplish uh, that. Uh, anyway, so we will be revisiting this point later, but it is important to remember that the proportion of variance explained by the i principal component is uh, this ratio here. So that's all for this video. So in the next video, we shall see how to or how this principal component analysis looks if we have an actual data set. So as you can imagine, all of the population parameters are going to be replaced with the sample parameters. So the sigma uh, is going to be replaced with the sample covariance matrix. Anyway, so we shall talk about that in the next video. See ya.